Tonight, two Canadian women and three teenage girls missing from the Kurdish controlled camps in Syria, raising alarm for their safety and well being, and Canadian flags at half mast to observe the third anniversary of what is described as Canada's worst mass murder. We cover stories about the French President's unapologetic national address. Twitter labelling CBC as 69% government funded and China's diplomacy in action as it calls for peace talks between Israel and Palestine. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I am Catherine Bullock. The whereabouts of two Canadian women and three teenage girls who failed to show up for a planned repatriation flight to Canada are still not known. There are questions about their well-being, as it has been more than a week since the women and girls disappeared. The missing women were supposed to be among 19 Canadian women and children boarding a flight on April 6th back to Canada. The two women are from Edmonton. One of the women has three teenage daughters. According to their lawyer, one of the women made a short phone call today to a relative saying they were in distress. The lawyer says he fears the women and girls are in danger. He says the relatives received a message from a woman in Al Hol camp in Syria saying that on April 2nd, the women boarded a military vehicle. The text said they were driven away to an interrogation site controlled by Kurdish authorities, also referred to as the Red Prison. Statistics Canada says annual consumer inflation has slowed to 4.3% in January. While the figure was in line with expectations, this is a major retreat from January's 5.2% year-on-year gain. Annual consumer inflation has also significantly slowed since an 8.1% gain in June, which was the highest in 39 years. Excluding food and energy, consumer prices rose 4.5% on a yearly basis in March. Gasoline prices in March made the largest annual decline since July 2020. They dropped year on year for the second consecutive month with a 13.8 decrease. A Moscow court has rejected the request of a US reporter currently jailed in a former KGB prison to be released. After a short hearing, the judge said the Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich's detention until the end of May would remain in place without any changes. Gershkovich, who has worked in Russia for six years, was detained in Yekaterinburg on March 29th. According to the Russian Federal Security Service, he is charged with spying in the interests of the American government. The US and more than 40 other countries yesterday denounced Russia's arrest of the reporter and called for his immediate release. The Wall Street Journal denies the espionage allegations against Gershkovich and has been calling for his immediate release. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says Russia has wrongfully detained Gershkovich. Today is the third anniversary of Canada's worst mass murder. On April 18 and 19, a killing spree claimed 22 lives in Nova Scotia. Flags were lowered to half-mast to mark the third anniversary. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said in a statement that we remember the memories of the people we lost close to our hearts. Three years ago, a gunman wearing the uniform of a Royal Canadian Mounted Police Officer and driving a vehicle made to resemble a police cruiser began his rampage. Provincial flags were flown today at half-mast on all government buildings to mark the two days of tragedy. City buses in the capital of Halifax were pulled over at noon for a moment of silence. Three years the Mass Casualty Commission inquiry report deplored the RCMP's response to the mass shootings. French President Emmanuel Macron is unmoved after three months of protest against his pension reform plan. In his first public appearance yesterday, since the controversial reform has been signed into French law, Macron defended the plan as necessary and stated doing nothing was not a solution. Macron says he understood the anger felt by the French. His speech was met with yet more, sometimes violent, protests throughout France. Macron says he regrets that no consensus has been found on the change. Macron signed the legislation early Saturday, just hours after the Constitutional Court accepted its most important change to hike the retirement age 
from 62 to 64. The left and unions dismissed Macron's latest attempt to ease tensions and warned of mass labour protests on May 1. Polls have consistently recorded a majority of French opposed to the reform, which the government rammed through Parliament using a controversial mechanism to avoid a vote. Macron's personal popularity ratings have eroded with his latest move. Some analysts suggest he has given a head start to far-right leader Marine Le Pen in the 2027 elections. Please stay tuned. We will join you after a short break. Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. I'm here to ask you to support something which we are watching right now, Muslim Network Television. Just like PBS, NPR, or even your masjid, we depend on your donations. We broadcast Muslims, we put Muslims on air, we bring good news, we counter negative media with positive media. And here is an example. When the terrible earthquakes hit Turkey and Syria, Muslim Americans donated $100 million within five days. That was more than what U.S. government gave in the same time. Getting our news out is what Muslim Network does. This Ramadan, stand for your community. Donate to Muslim Network. Do it now. Visit muslimnetwork.tv. Thank you so much and assalamu alaikum. China is calling the arrest of two Chinese men in the United States a political manipulation. The news comes after U.S. authorities have arrested two men yesterday for setting up an unauthorized Chinese police station in New York. They have also charged dozens of Chinese security officials for a campaign to monitor and harass U.S.-based dissidents. According to the U.S. officials, two men opened an office last year in Manhattan's Chinatown at the behest of China's National Police Force. The federal, district attorney, the, the federal district attorney in Brooklyn says the office, which was not registered with the U.S. government, performs services like renewing China-issued driver's licenses. The attorney says it also took a role in helping track down and harass fugitive dissidents from the People's Republic of China. Canada and several European governments have cracked down on similar operations. Elon Musk seems to be making a joke at the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation's expense. He has labelled the CBC's Twitter account with a description that says, quote, 69% government-funded media. The news comes after the online streaming platform labelled the CBC's official account as government-funded at the behest of Conservative leader Pierre Polyevre. The CBC responded by saying that it was less than 70% funded by the government. It also said it was pausing its Twitter activity for some time. Polyevra has applauded Twitter's move. The Conservative leader has pledged to defund the CBC if he is elected Prime Minister. In a tweet, Polyevra said people will now know that the CBC is not news, but Trudeau propaganda. The CBC argues that the federal government plays no role in its content creation. The national broadcaster says Twitter's definition of government-funded media includes varying degrees of influence over editorial content. It says that is, this is not the case with the CBC. The Sudanese army has agreed to a temporary ceasefire with its rival, the paramilitary Rapid Support Forces. The news comes after explosions have rocked the Sudanese capital Khartoum for the fourth day. So far, the fighting has claimed nearly 200 lives. Loud explosions were heard this morning in Khartoum, where militia men in turbans and fatigues roamed the streets. A weeks-long power struggle between the forces of two generals erupted Saturday into deadly violence. The generals are former allies who seized power in a 2021 coup. In a statement, G7 foreign ministers meeting in Japan called for the warring parties to end hostilities immediately. Terrified residents of the capital are spending the last and holiest days of Ramadan watching from their windows as tanks roll through the streets. Many have lost power and internet connection after four days of sporadic supply and residents are finding it increasingly difficult to get reliable information. Food supplies are running out as the violence has prevented the few grocery stores that remain open to replenish dwindling stock stocks. The fighting has also damaged aircraft and brought a halt to flights to and from Khartoum Airport. 
China is ready to broker a peace deal between Israel and Palestine. This is its latest effort to bring peace to the region. The news comes after China's foreign minister called his Israeli and Palestinian counterparts yesterday, offering mediation to end tensions between the two sides. In an unprecedented move, last month China restored diplomatic ties between Iran and Saudi Arabia. A statement issued by the Chinese foreign ministry says Beijing encourages Israel and Palestine to resume peace talks. The two countries have not engaged in a peace dialogue for more than a decade. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is adamant about building new settlements in the occupied West Bank. The world community, including his close international allies, consider the settlements illegal. A statement issued by the Israeli Foreign Ministry says Beijing and Tel Aviv discussed preserving peace in the Al-Aqsa compound during the holy month of Ramadan. However, the statement did not mention the discussion of peace talks with the Palestinians. Thank you for watching. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or go to our website muslimnetwork.tv to make a donation so that we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.